welcome to our celebration of Mass on this, the third Sunday of Easter. As we begin Mass, please join in singing our opening hymn, found in the People's Mass book, Crown Him with Many Crowns, number 359, number 359. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You forgive our sins, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he decided to release him. You denied the Holy and the Righteous One and ask that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all of the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Put gladness into my heart. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way that we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not with them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Wouldn't it be nice if um, after the resurrection of Jesus, he appears to Herod, to Pilate, and to all the torturers, and shows them his glorious body, 
and then tells them how he's having the last laugh. <laughs> it would have been nice, but of what purpose? Of what use would it have been if he shows his glorious body to Pilate and to his torturers? Because there is no automatic connection between sensory experience and faith. As a matter of fact, sensory experience is fundamentally limited as a basis for any faith experience. And by sensory experience, we mean sight, touch, feel, everything within our sensory uh, connections. There is a fundamental disconnection. <coughs> because even as humans, our sensory experiences are very limited. Very limited. Take our sight, for instance. And there are things that our eyes cannot see, a whole world of microorganisms that exist, but our eyes cannot see. So because our eyes don't see them, does that deny them reality? And so if the human eyes cannot even see microbes, how much more spiritual reality? And how can our limited human sight now become the foundation of an infinite reality? How does a finite sensory experience become the confirmation of an infinite and eternal spiritual reality? It cannot. And so there was even no need for Jesus to show himself to people who were not ready for the faith. Go back to our sight example, our eyes. Yes, we think we see, but you know, there's what some psychologists call inattentional blindness. But very often, all of us are blind in a sense. Imagine you went to a restaurant, and there was this fellow who was just looking at you, staring at you, and looking at you so intently, and you're like, whoa, 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 what, what? And then you look up and discover there's a television screen right above where you were sitting. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, he was not even looking at you. He was looking at the television. His mind is far away from you. He doesn't even know you exist, even though his eyes are all staring at your direction. Or even sometimes you may be staring at something yourself. And you're staring in that direction, but your mind is far away. Far away. And that is inattentional blindness. So how then, with all of those limitations, will sensory experience become the foundation of faith? No. And that's why St. Paul puts it so beautifully in his second letter to the Corinthians, where he says, we walk by faith, not by sight. In fact, you know, there's that beautiful song we always sing. We walk by faith and not by sight. And precisely that, that our faith in the risen Lord is not based on sight. Yet sight might be good, but that's a very limited foundation to this experience that we describe. And that's really what we read in our gospel tonight. That the two disciples came back and they were now recounting their experience. How Jesus walked by them, but they did not recognize him. Until it was time for the breaking of bread. And he broke the bread. And that was when they recognized. And they said, Rabboni, master. And he disappeared. And then they were now telling this experience to, to their colleagues. 
when suddenly Jesus reappears and says to them, Shalom, peace. And they were all terrified and frightened. And he tells them, take it easy. It's me. All right. You need sensory experience? All right, come, come. Take a look. Take a look. You want to touch? All right. Here, here's me. Touch, touch. But he says, that shouldn't be the basis for your faith in me. He says, do you have something to eat? Do you have anything, anything to eat? He says, yeah, bring it. And he broke it. And they all sat around him. And they felt excitement. They felt amazement at that breaking of the bread. And that's our resurrection experience. And so the word of the Lord is really reminding us tonight that our encounter with the Lord is not in the eyes, but in the heart. Our encounter with the risen Lord, what Jesus is asking of us tonight, is to open our hearts to the power and the grace of the resurrection. And that's what Peter tells the listeners in our first reading when he tells them, look, you guys may have killed Jesus, but he's now risen. And he's now ready to forgive you, and he's ready to begin a new life with you. So long as you are ready to repent. And so the whole reading tonight brings together three things. Repentance, forgiveness, and transformation. Repentance, forgiveness, and transformation. And that's the heart of our experience and encounter with our risen Lord. And so our prayer tonight is that the Lord will open our heart to his grace, to his transforming grace. That the Lord will open us to the grace to forgive, the grace to let go. Yes, sometimes we may be hurt. Sometimes you may be treated like as if you are inconsequential. The grace of the resurrection is the ability to forgive because it takes a strong character to forgive. Yes, sometimes we may carry pain in our hearts, even from people you don't expect. But the power of transformation in the resurrection is the ability for us to look in words. To repent, believe, forgive, and allow the power of the risen Lord to transform us. And you know the benefits of that? Peace, courage, strength. And that's what the power of the resurrection gives to us. The peace that the world cannot give. The peace that nothing on earth can provide. That's what Jesus gives to us. And that's why when he appears to the apostles, he says to them, peace. Peace. And so we pray tonight that even in our personal relationships, when things don't sometimes add up, in the world around us, things sometimes don't add up. Always remember that Christ is risen and that Christ is alive. And for those who believe, he raises up everything. For those who trust in him, he confers on them strength, peace, and courage. May this same power of the risen Lord continue to strengthen us. May it continue to encourage us. May it continue to refresh us and remold us and remake us because we do know that Christ is alive and he is risen indeed.
Somebody please say amen. amen. May we rise. I believe in one God. Prayer of the faithful, Christ is our life and resurrection. Let us cry out to him with faith that he, the Son of God, may protect his people. Lord Jesus, we pray for your Catholic Church. Make it holy so that your kingdom may be established among all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and the sorrowful, for those in bondage and exile, that they may receive consolation and help. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have turned away from your paths, that they may experience the grace of your forgiveness and the joy of rising to new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Crucified and risen Savior, you will come to judge the world. Have mercy on us sinners. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all the living and for all who have gone from us in the hope of resurrection, especially Ralph Lieb, Carolyn Hall, and Lisa Velker. Let us pray to the Lord. Lead your people into life. Grant admittance to your kingdom and bless those for whom we offer this sacrifice of mass, especially Bernadette White. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, by raising Jesus from the dead, you open for us the way to eternal life. Open our hearts to the spirit within us so that we too will one day rise to the same glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. During the preparation of gifts, please join in singing our hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, found in the Gather Hymnal, number 828, number 828. <laughs>
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross and by commending himself to you for our salvation showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they now acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph espouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. found in the gather hymnal in the breaking of the bread, number 918, number 918. <laughs>
Let us rise and pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant that we, and grant we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits, prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's join in singing our closing hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, found in the People's Mass Book, number 363, number 363. Um.